cities. As for us, basically we have a very much well guaranteed supply, right? So the way we well the approach the problem is actually more on a cost benefit analysis basis. When to bring in the other dimensions of water supply. I can I will talk about that uh, further on. And uh, that's history again. Well, back in 1963, when we have a civil draft in Hong Kong, then the Mongdong province agreed to construct the Dongcheng water supply scheme to transfer water to Hong Kong. Well, the web that is the blessing. Well, in fact, the blessing, well, there's a mission to be undertaken by the Guangdong province, but it is backed by the premier at then. Uh, back on to the commitment uh, on Guangdong on the supplies of water to Hong Kong. Well, basically, we should talk about two issues. The first one is quantity, and the second one is quality. Uh, on quantity, uh, back in 2008, the Guangdong province government actually has uh, divided the supply of Dongjiang for provision to different cities along the Dongjiang rivers. The speak uh, come out something like that. I think these speakers that we have to uh, pay attention to. The annual flow, annual flow quantity of Dongjiang is something like 32.7 billion cubic meter. And they only allocate 32.7% for distribution to the cities along Dongjiang. The reason is the river is for several purposes. It's for water supply purpose, is for shipment purpose, that means for man, well, maintaining navigation, that is for ecology, for environmental considerations, and also is for well, generation of electricity. So they cannot actually allocate all the amounts, all the waters for, well, the, for supply purpose. And out of the, the 32.7%, Hong Kong get its shares of 3.4%, a very nominal amount. Uh, but it's already sufficient for us. There's already 1.1 billion cubic meter. And that's uh, shown in table form. Well, the, it's Hong Kong here. Well, getting a reasonable shares. Uh, and in fact, well, place like some jams, etc., get even more because of their other use, because of industrial use, etc. Uh, coming back to the Quality of uh, water quality. Well, they are following a national standard, what we call GB3838. And in fact, well, for, for us, we actually set up uh, online monitoring stations at the northernmost pumping station in the boundary of Hong Kong. So the, that, mean, that means uh, we are actually monitoring the quality of water being transported from the Songjian reservoirs to Hong Kong well, uh, continuously. And also we are doing some uh, regular on-site sampling and monitoring. Together we are exchanging the monitoring the information with the China counterparts. And all the informations are published in the department's website. Uh, looking ahead, uh, they try to step up uh, their monitoring process. And in fact, they are now having a program of installing online monitoring devices along the Dongjiang rivers to monitor the quantity and quality of the flow. Uh, that project, as we understand from the Hong Kong counterpart, will be completed in 2011. A uh, draft in 1963, well, not as alarming as the opening size uh, might uh, so, but well, maybe that one is more interesting than this one. But they saw the, st uh, the stress, the stress of the people at then. Uh, would we ever end up with that kind of situation? Well, the, my answer is that, well, as long as we remain alert, we should be okay. But what will be impact upon? I think uh, uh, Mr. Lee will talk about it later on from the Hong Kong Observatory uh, perspective. Uh, climate change is going to affect us, and in fact, it's quite unpredictable, the change. Just like what we have in the past few months, or even weeks, in China. Well, the, I think back in the April, we are talking about a drought in the southwestern part of China. 
I still remember about the, before the day of uh, the Hong Kong government uh, went to let's go uh, for uh, funding support, all right, to uh, to provide relief. I actually discussed with uh, Carrie, Carrie Lam, the, well, the Secretary for Development, about uh, uh, what kind of relief uh, the engineers can provide. All right. So basically, it's a neighbor. But now it's suddenly, well, that you got flood already in Guangxi. So that is the kind of thing that we worry about. Water never come in the right quantity in the right time. All right. And uh, the, the solution itself, basically, somehow rely on provision of infrastructures. I tell you, uh, for Dongjiang, basically Hong Kong is perhaps uh, best prepared well, amongst most of the places uh, because we have 17 impounding reservoirs and the storage of the impounding reservoirs will be able to support Hong Kong well, by something like four to six months, depending up to what amount that you're going to use. As compared with Macau, uh, is basically it's only get a storage of 15 days, 15 days. All right. All right. The one last uh, about the, the clock has clicked, and but the more important thing is that besides infrastructure, we have to put in a management strategies. So that is we promulgate a total water management strategy back in 2008 to try to encourage the people to contain the growth of water demand through conservations and also strengthen our water supply management. That's what we have been doing quietly. Although it has not attracted well, much the press extension, I hope after today they can attract more. We are doing a water conservation start at home campaign. We aim to cover about 20% of the pi primary schools in Hong Kong by uh, well, this summer. And we are also doing the water audit with school kids. That's a picture showing how they are doing the work. And whenever there is promotion activities, WSD well, would like to be co-organizer. That is the Dow Line Water One on the 18th of April. We participate on that one. We also participate in the CJC Chambers Millennium Dream uh, Water Savers well, kickoff ceremony. They are asking the uh, young generation to provide videos uh, advising people how to save water. So we, we hope with this kind of uh, activities, we will actually well, it, well, allow the, the younger generation has the concept of conserving waters. And for the school kid, we're actually going to well, the select uh, water conservation ambassadors. And that will be granted in July this year. Well, basically, well, so we hope that they will promote the message and keep it going. There's other type of uh, promotion acti uh, conservation activities. So the demand management, demand measures, the management measure is to enhance the public education, promote use of water saving device, enhance water leakage control, and extend the use of seawater for toilet flushing, but encouraging not to use that well, much of uh, quantity. As for the uh, supply measures, we're actually strengthening well, the protection of uh, water resources for improvement of catchment, and I can assure you that well, Hong Kong has already mastered all the technologies required for doing water recycling and seawater desalination by reverse osmosis process. In fact, well, the, if you visit Long Ping, uh, we have already put in that kind of pumps for supplying of the toilet on the MTLC compound. And we did a, a pilot study on seawater desalination using reverse osmosis back in 2007. At both location, at two locations, one in Abe Chow and one in Chimun. Both are successful. Both are successful. Technology based on the well, the technological assessment. All right, but uh, cost is one of the issues. Cost is one of the issues. And then, well, the, basically, the total water management strategy actually provide the foundations for us to keep on monitoring the situations and well, uh, to bring in or strengthen particular measures when required to meet the challenge. But the important point is that don't take water for granted and we have to remain alert. All right, thank you.